I've just overheard the most ridiculous statement. I mean, somebody, I've just walked past somebody and they were saying to somebody else that they said scandium and zinc weren't transition elements. I mean, what's all that about? There they are in the D block. This is the transition element. And they were saying that these two aren't transition elements. How ridiculous. Now, obviously, the best place to start to try and settle this argument is to look at the definition of a transition element. So there it is written up for you. A transition element is a D block element that forms at least one ion with an incomplete D subshell. Now, before we can write the electronic configurations of the ions of the transition element, we need to know about the electronic configurations of the actual atoms themselves. So, eventually, I'm going to fill up this whole table. We'll start with scandium. So, it's got an atomic number of 21. So, its electronic configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. And then, if you can see there, that little rule that we teach you, 4s fills before 3d, so the 4s orbital is filled next, and then that leaves one electron which is going to go into the 3d um, subshell. So it belongs to the d block, scandium, because there it is, there, this is the d block. Its highest energy electron is in a D subshell. Now when you write the electronic configurations the examiner isn't going to mind which way around you write these two. Sometimes people write the, all the threes together so 3D1 would be there and then 4S2 or you can write it as I have. Remember also that you can abbreviate this part of the structure to um, argon in square brackets so instead of writing all of that up to 3p6 you can just have AR in square brackets and then 4s2 3d1 and the other way we can represent electronic configurations is known as the electron in box diagram and so we represent the electrons as arrows so remember so this is the 4s orbital here, so there's one electron and there's the other electron. The arrows indicate the spin, so opposite spins in an orbital. And then we've got the 3d subshell there, so that's made up of 5d orbitals and we'll put the 3d1 in there. So if we move on to titanium next, this has 22 electrons. And so it's electronic configuration, I'm abbreviating now, I don't want to write all of that again. So argon in square brackets, 4s2, 3d2. And so how do we draw this? Well, there's the two 4s electrons. The 3d electrons, remember, we half fill the orbitals before we pair up. So we should write it like that. I just want to talk you through chromium um, because it's a bit unusual. That's why there's a star next to it on my table here. So you would expect, following on from this pattern, you would expect it to be 4s2, 3d4. But what it actually does is this, 4s1, 3d5. So if you have a look at the electrons in box representation of that, chromium is much more stable if the 4s electron, one of the 4s electrons, is actually promoted from here into the 3d um, subshell. So it would rather have this half filled configuration than imagine one in there and then that wasn't there. So just be careful with chromium because it's a bit awkward. So we've got the table completed now and if we pick up from where we left off, the last one we did was the awkward one, chromium. You can see manganese just starts to pick up the pattern again. So we end up with 4s2, 3d5. 
iron, 4s23d6, cobalt, 4s23d7, nickel, 4s23d8, and then copper is the next unusual one. You would expect 4s23d9, but it's actually more stable if the 4s electron, one of the 4s electrons, is promoted up into 3d and then that will fill up the um, subshell and make it more stable in that arrangement and so copper has this unusual 4s1 3d10 configuration and the last one obviously is zinc and we'll just finish off with 4s2 3d10 so it's quite easy if you just look at the periodic table you can work out the electronic configurations um, very quickly Remember though that chromium and copper are slightly strange. So scandium is the first member of the 3D block. So we have argon, 4s2, 3D1. So then it's the same, 3D2, 3D3, not 3D4, 3D5. 3D5 again but 4s2, 3D6, 3D7, 3D8, not 3D9, but 4S1, 3D10, 4S2, 3D10. So you've got that, it's obviously 10 wide because the D subshell with its 5D orbitals can hold 10 electrons. 2 times 5 gives you the 10. So 1, 2, 3, 5, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 10. So if we come onto the ions of the transition elements now, or the ions of the of the 3D um, elements, then you can see I've added an extra statement here. After 4S fills before 3D, 4S is also lost before 3D. So when these elements form positive ions, you only ever form positive ions, they are going to lose electrons. And it's the 4s electrons that are lost before the 3d electrons. So we'll have a look at a few examples now then. So the first one I've written on the board there is the titanium 3 plus ion. So there's titanium, the atom. And it's got an argon 4s2 3d2 configuration. So if it forms the 3 plus ion, then it needs to lose 3 electrons. So which electrons will it lose? Well, it's going to lose these two first, so it won't have any 4s electrons, and it's going to lose one of these 3d electrons. So, titanium 3 plus has this configuration, argon, remember we're losing 4s first, so there's two gone from there, we'll lose one of those, so it's 3d1. We look at iron 2 plus now, so there's iron. This is the element configuration, argon, 4s2, 3d6. So if we're going to form a 2 plus ion, we need to lose two electrons. Which electrons are going to go? The 4s electrons. So they will disappear. So it's just argon, 3d6. We'll do one of the strange ones now. So chromium. Um, is the unusual, one of the unusual ones, argon 4s1, 3d5. So the chromium 3 plus ion, we need to lose this 4s1 electron first, and then two more, so we're going to take these, uh, this down to 3d3. So chromium 3 plus will be argon 3d3. And the last one of these, we'll, go to, we'll do copper 2 plus. So there's the, the atom, argon, 4s1, 3d10. We need to form a 2 plus ion, so we need to lose two electrons. Remember that one will go first, so four, there's no 4s electrons. So it's argon, 3d9. So if we refer back to the definition of the transition element, then we can see there's four examples here, all different um, transition elements or different members of that um, D block. Um, you can see each of these ions 
is satisfying that rule, that condition, where it has an incomplete D subshell. So obviously 3D10 is a complete 3D subshell. So 3D1 is incomplete, 3D6 is, 3D3 is, 3D9 is. So getting back to this, um, it's the start of the video. What about scandium and zinc then? Are they transition elements or not? Well, we need to know that scandium only forms three plus ions. So what would be the electronic configuration of scandium three plus? So it's going to lose these three electrons, isn't it? It's going to lose those first, then that one. So it's effectively just argon. So does that have an incomplete 3D subshell? Well, it hasn't even got any electrons in the 3D subshell. So it's not satisfying that condition. So that's why scandium is actually not a transition element. And zinc, well, zinc only forms the zinc 2 plus ion. So if we look at the configuration of zinc, argon 4s2, 3d10, we're going to lose those 4s2 electrons. So zinc 2 plus configuration is argon 3d10. Well, that's full. It's not incomplete. And if that's the only ion that zinc will form, then zinc's not a transition element. So the people who were having that conversation that I overheard were actually right and I was wrong. Wasn't really wrong, I just made it all up. <laughs>